Hi, I'm Shoestring Jane. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things thrifty, frugal and money saving. And just to catch up on the last week, it's been a really busy week. It's I had my mum here for the weekend and we had a really lovely weekend and we went out for a cream tea, a really beautiful, beautiful old hotel called Greyfriars. And it's funny because it has a bit of history for me because it used to be an old adult community college, just like a learning centre. And I used to work there teaching yoga. So it was a really a lovely, interesting building even then because it's really old. It's a really old building. I don't know when it's when it was built, but it's maybe sort of 17, 1800s. It's a really lovely building and it's had lots of interesting things on that site, which is why where the Grey Friars come, came from, because it was a friary at one point. Um, and it's just a lovely building and she'd never been and she needed cheering up. And I thought, God, let's just do it. Splash out and go to Greyfriars and have a cream tea. So that was low carb eating completely out of the window, obviously. And also it involves some spending, but sometimes you have to spend money. And that's really the theme of this video, that sometimes if you can spend, and it's going to add some quality to your life, then spend. If you've got the money, if you've got something in your budget, some room to spend, then spend. Being frugal doesn't mean never spending money and being mean and miserly. It means making the best of your of what you've got, of your resources, really budgeting carefully so that you then have extra money to spend to make your life better and enjoy yourself. And it can be experiences or it might be that it's something that you, you want to buy that or you need to buy that will add some value to your life. And I, I think that's really, that's okay. That's my kind of way of being really. I don't overspend when I need to spend. I try to get the best value. I try to buy second hand because that really helps me to buy good value on a budget. Um, and then I make sure that there's some money left over for the fun stuff, because I think that's really important. I've also been really busy this week helping my eldest daughter move into a new flat. And when we got there, well, it's a nice flat in a nice area, but it's really tatty. It's a rented flat. It was really tatty. I do find this with from all three of my daughters. They've all they're in rented now, all three of them, and they've been in rented over many years now between them, that landlords do not want to spend any money. They take the money, they take the rent very happily. They do not want to spend any money on their tenants. If I was a landlord, I would, it would be a point of pride that I made the house look nice or the, the flat look nice before my new tenants moved in, in the hope that they would then have a sense of pride as well and look after it. Even, you know, you can do a lot with a lick of paint. You could do a lot with a look of paint. That's what we've been doing in this house. And so we decided to do the same for her and we went over and helped her decorate. It is still a work in progress because we only had one day before the removal men were bringing the furniture in. So we had one day available to just go and paint like mad. So we managed one coat on most things or it was the bedroom and the lounge that we were most worried about because that's going to have the most furniture in there. Um, we did one coat on everything. We did the woodwork and we did the ceilings. So she is in now. She had to move in. We've got to go back at some point in the next couple of weeks and do the second coat for her. I'm doing this white paint. Becky is doing, Becky is doing the grey paint, which is actually like blue grey. Mauve. Sort of mauve. Blue. We don't. It's nice actually. Look at the colour of it. Very nice. And that, that's what we've done here really, is just, you know, you can do a lot with a, a lick of paint, as I say, and I do try to buy nice paint because I have bought cheap, like trade paint in the past, and it was a false economy, and it's getting back to, sometimes you have to spend money, but try to buy well. I've done that, made a mistake doing it, like trade magnolia, it just, just looked horrible. And obviously this is what landlords use when they do a flat. So we went and bought some quite nice quality gray paint she wanted for her sitting room. 
and just some white paint for the bedrooms and everywhere else really um, from B&Q and it was quite a nice quality. It was ridiculously expensive, but it wasn't the cheap trade stuff either. So Becky's gonna need a few bits and pieces for her flat. So we got, we're all looking out for good quality second-hand furniture. Um, the first thing we did actually was go round and look in about three of the big charity shops that have like furniture warehouses. There were two of them actually, but two, MAS has two stores, so we went to both of those. And the other one was the British Art Foundation. So they all have furniture. Something she needed was a freezer because her freezer packed up just before she left the old place. And she, like me, uses her freezer a lot because you can buy a lot of yellow sticker food you know when you see it and you can freeze it you can freeze leftovers and you can batch cook and that kind of thing so to her having a freezer was really important we went to the British Art Foundation didn't have one went into Mayas and they had a perfect little freezer for her so she bought that for I think it was about 60 pounds 65 pounds maybe um, and then got it delivered as well so that was a worthwhile buy and the it was a good make as well. I think it was Hot Point, her freezer. It was a decent make. So it obviously cost a lot more than that new. And that's another way of buying good quality. I would say try and look second hand because you can get really good quality things, maybe better quality than you would be able to afford new. Because in the past, I used to buy the cheapest. I went through a phase of buying the cheapest of everything just to get stuff. This was supplied to things like footwear and toys and that kind of thing. Toys particularly, I felt, think they were just, buying cheap just wasn't worth it. They were just bits of plastic that fell to pieces and didn't last. Um, then I discovered that I could get a lot of secondhand toys that were really good quality, that would last for years. And that I picked those up from boot sales, mainly from boot sales actually, but also from you know notice boards and charity shops and that sort of thing when the girls were smaller. And I also bought good solid pieces of furniture and I continue to do that now. So they might be really old fashioned. I love the, I think they're kind of 1940s, 1950s, really solid bedroom furniture. And we had a load of that stuff when the girls were little and I just painted it all white. And that was before the days when you know, had fancy chalk paint and that kind of thing. Painted it white and it looked really nice and sometimes I stenciled it. Um, and it looked really pretty and it was good solid furniture. Whereas you buy the flat pack stuff now and it just, it doesn't go together very well. Well, not when I'm doing it anyway. When Justin does it, it's got more of a chance. I'm not very good at doing this, um, but it just feels like it's, it doesn't go together well and it doesn't last well. It's not really built to last. Um, and that, I think that's, that's why I'm drawn to old things, I think. I, I like the kind of the idea that they are not mass produced that some care and attention has gone into them. I love vintage things for this reason, that sometimes they're quirky, not many of them were made, so they're a bit different, and I quite like that. And you can, you know, if they're in poor condition, you can upcycle them. So obviously if you're a an rare antique, you're not gonna start painting them. You're gonna have them exactly as they are and appreciate their beauty. But if they're a bit tatty, like I say, they, they, it's good solid wood furniture, but very dark wood, it feels, a bit too dark sometimes so painting it a nice bright colour can really bring it to life and the other thing is with this is that I don't care about fashion particularly as I've got older I don't care about fashion I would rather buy something that I like and I think about what I genuinely like so I may be going against the tide I quite often am sometimes I find I'm I've said this before in other videos I'm accidentally in fashion and that's fine but I don't care about that I buy what I like I like to surround myself with things that I enjoy. I mean, all of this behind me, this is all inexpensive bits of china. And some people would look at that and think that's really old fashioned. They're like a more modern kind of look. For me, I quite like that old cottagey look. So because I like it, that's what I'm gonna go for. Because I can also pick things up quite cheaply and I can upcycle bits of furniture that we've already got, like this dresser. You've seen the upcycling of the dresser on more than one occasion on this channel. You've seen it, I think it went blue first and then it, it's now gone to pink. And it was a, a piece of furniture that my mum and dad had made in the 80s. So it's almost a family heirloom. But sometimes I can't find exactly what I want secondhand and I do buy new. And recently I had to spend money because I really needed a pair of decent winter boots. And I've been looking and looking. I've bought some secondhand ones last year, but they didn't have enough grip on them. Um, I wanted something really warm 
waterproof with decent grip. We live in quite a hilly area. So when it's frosty, you want some grip. You don't want to be sliding down the hills when you're doing your dog walks. So I actually invested in these, which are Skechers. As you can see, they're quite well worn already. They've got some good grip. They've got a waterproof coating, which I will re-waterproof from time to time. I do have some waterproof spray, um, which and they're just suede and they've got a cozy lining. So they're nice and warm. And they were sketches. And I, I looked around for some secondhand ones. And I did find some good secondhand ones on eBay. But I thought in the end, I thought, actually, I can get these. These ones were £50 reduced from, I think they were 80 I found them online, not on eBay, but they were new. And some people were asking a similar amount for secondhand pairs on eBay. So I thought, no, I'm going to get a new pair. They're exactly what I want. I know they're what I want. And that's worth spending the money because they will add value to my life. I wear them every single day over the winter period. Um, I've worn them loads already and been over to the wet grass with the dog when I'm doing his ball time in the afternoon. And I know I'm not going to come back with wet feet, which is what was happening last year. So um, they were worthwhile investment for me and I'll, they'll, I'll get a lot of years of use out of those. So I could have bought a cheaper pair. I could have bought a cheap second hand pair again. But in the end, sometimes it's just worth spending the money, isn't it? Um, I do find this with footwear generally. I don't buy cheap shoes anymore because I did that in the past. And, you know, they're not good quality. And I want leather shoes because I just find they're breathable and they are cleanable and they last a long time and they tend to kind of mold themselves to your feet. Um, plastic shoes are uncomfortable and make the feet sweaty. And, you know, what happens to them when you finished with them? You know, they don't rot down. At least leather does that, even if the soles won't. So I try to do that. Um, and so I was pleased with those. And that kind of, it's my, it, it kind of illustrates my, attitude generally as I say I'm all for buying something new if it helps me to kind of upcycle and improve things if I cannot find it second hand or if that's the way to get a quality item if that's what I need to do so that's what I'll do um I did buy you and you've seen this in a recent video I bought some you might think they're kind of rubbish stretchy covers and they weren't expensive so they weren't that cheap but they weren't super super expensive. If I'd had my sofa completely reupholstered, that would have cost me a fortune. And it was a sofa that I bought secondhand from a charity shop for around about £80. And it's a G-Plan sofa and it's really good quality and really, really comfortable So, and hard wearing. So I was very reluctant to get rid of it, even though it was really kind of grubby looking and tatty looking. And so I bought the stretch covers for it. So yes, I'll buy something new because it makes something old better and gives it a new lease of life. So that's really worth doing it. Um, actually, it made me, this whole, this kind of conversation, this chat now is making me think about my Facebook group, my second hand of Frugal Life. And there was a thread on there recently where somebody said she'd got loads of good little Christmassy things from Timu. And there was a bit of a discussion got a little bit heated because a lot of people didn't approve of Timu. And in case you haven't come across them, I mean, I don't know how you could avoid them. They're literally the adverts are all over social media. So if you use any form of social media, they're always there. And I've accidentally clicked on it before and come off it because I, I looked at their introductory prices and that's, they give you things like, um, I don't know, I can't think of anything now, but you know, a pair of boots like this, that would normally be they're reduced from thirty pounds to one ninety nine, and and I think what you, you cannot possibly be offering a good product for one ninety nine that you're saying is actually worth thirty pounds, um, and although the lady on my Facebook group said she'd had loads of stuff from there and that it was all really good value and it was worth buying, she felt other people said, well, you know if. If you're buying it that cheaply, it's going to be really poor quality. And then actually something came up on my YouTube feed, because everything listens to you, doesn't it? Um, about Timu, where somebody had said he made a video and I'll, I'll link it below. Actually, he made a video saying that if you're buying from Timu or similar organisations in China, usually that he he feels and I think there's probably something in this that if you're paying a tiny fraction of what you would imagine a product would normally 
retail for, then someone somewhere down the line is suffering because of that. Someone is not being paid. It can either be the people that made the product, the people that transport the product, the normal retailers of the product. Someone's not getting paid properly somewhere. So I, I kind of think to me, well, I don't know if that's worth it. And, you know, the, maybe they're, they're not looking at the environment when they're making those products because, you know, who cares about spewing waste into a river? when the bottom line is your profit margin and it's all being shipped over or flown over from China. So it's another kind of downside of uh, of buying those kind of products. Um, and I, I just think, well, it made me think about it a little bit more. And, you know, I've made a decision based on that and the conversations on the group that I won't be buying anything from Timu, no matter how good it looks and how much of a bargain, because I think there's always some kind of other costs to be had. So I'd be interested to know what you think in the comments below, actually. And the other thing that uh, came up was um, people saying that they draw you in as a customer because they're actually going to steal your data and sell it on, and that's how they make the money. So it doesn't matter if they're selling things really cheaply. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true, but I do think there's a lot of that ton of data stealing going on. Um, and I certainly, honestly, if I sign up for anything, I end up getting loads of junk mail. And that's even the case with, you know, quite reputable companies because I've signed up with them to do competitions at the beginning of the year. I think I mentioned that I was doing a lot of competitions. I'm not doing the competitions now. They were just taking too long for the benefits, really. But I had to sign up to a lot of newsletters to enter. And I did find I was getting a load of junk mail. And I think that's the case even if you tick the box and say, I don't want to hear, I don't want further offers, you still someone seems to be getting your data and getting so I'm kind of a bit suspicious of companies not selling on customers data so and that's another thing that another reason really why you know if you don't buy cheap stuff online and you consider going into an antique shop or a second hand store or a charity shop and buying a real sturdy good quality item be it a piece of clothing or a piece of furniture or whatever it is, a picture for your wall, whatever it is, then, you know, maybe you're doing a bit of good, you're supporting a small business or you're supporting a charity and you're not supporting some of these slightly nefarious business practices that we all suspect are going on. While I'm on the subject of second hand, I think it's also one of the reasons I like to sell second hand because it helps me bring in a little bit of income and it's that that whole thing about you know encouraging second hand and that kind of that circle where you keep things going and you don't just mass produce stuff which is destined for landfill so and and you kind of appreciate the, these things and i want to encourage an appreciation of second hand stuff i'll just show you actually a little it was quite a small haul that i got from a charity shop recently let me give you let me put my tea down and I'll show you just a few bits and pieces I got. Some of it's for me and some of it is to sell. This first thing is for me. <laughs> it's a very old twister. Um, I can't remember how much it was. It was only a pound or two. Um, and I looked inside and it's got all the bits. And we used to have this. I don't know where it went. I don't know what happened. And it, But I thought that's going to be a fun thing. I'm going to bring it out for Christmas for us to do one of the activities to do at Christmas. It doesn't have any resale sale value, really. I think so many of them were produced that they're only worth about a fiver or something. So this is something that we'll just have a bit of fun with ourselves. The kids used to love this when, when they were little. My, my girls loved it when they were little. And mum was saying to me the other day that in the 70s, she used to go to parties and they used to get the twister out because that's when it kind of came into being. And they'd all have a few drinks and they'd play Twister and end up showing the knickers and that kind of thing. So it's quite funny. <laughs> and I also picked this up myself. It was only a pound. It's not like, I mean, I felt it and thought, oh, this feels like wool, but I think it's just acrylic. Because I'm a little bit short of jumpers, it's just a turtleneck or a little roll neck, woolly feeling jumper to layer up from H&M. So it's not super thick in its own right, but it's one of those ones I can wear with a t-shirt underneath put cardigan on top and keep really really warm it's actually very cold today the weather's actually really turned today we had a lovely walk me and archie this morning so sunny really lovely but a very very, very cold wind and it's cold now i haven't given into the heating yet i'm sitting here this is my heated blanket it's not turned on but it's so nice and fleecy 
that just having it by itself is, is good enough at the moment. Um, later on, I will put the heating on for a bit because I've got a load of Becky's laundry, my daughter, because she's got so much stuff still in her flat and boxes and things that she needs to unpack. I took her laundry away because she's got nowhere to put her air up. I picked this up because I thought this is a very interesting vintage item. It's a pound, one whole pound. And I, I thought it's a fish kettle is what I thought. So it's made in England. I can't see what the make is. Um, but I, I don't know that I would use it to actually cook it now because it's aluminium and I don't think aluminium's that good for you, is it? I think it's been linked to Alzheimer's, but it could, you know, you could use it to put plants in or something. I think it's just a nice kind of silver coloured <laughs> tray, aluminum, um, or you could, you know, heat water in it. I guess you could use it for cooking, but I'm not sure that I would. I'm going to look into that a little bit more. I'm not sure it's got great value. It's one of those things that I just thought, oh, that's unusual. Not seen it before. Going to pick it up to learn about it. It's a pound. So whether that will have any use, I don't know. It might just be a container to, just to store things in. It's been at least a week since I bought this stuff. So I literally have forgotten what I bought. So, ah, yes. Oh, this is quite cute. It's a nice little Port Mirian pot. It's um, Port Mirian Harvest Blue. And it's just a little pot for jam, I think, or condiments or something. It's really pretty, isn't it? What a lovely colour blue. I think that was only a pound as well. It's nice. Um, and this, I just thought this was funny. This was two pounds. And this is probably for Justin's niece's children, his great nieces. It's a real old fashioned jack in the box. So stupid actually, because I knew what was going to happen when I saw it. I knew it was going to be a jack in the box. And yet I still went, ah, when it came out in the shop. <laughs> Isn't that just brilliant? It's got to be vintage, hasn't it? What does it say on here? It's got a kite mark. Oh, handmade in England by the Jack in the Box Company, who are based in Norfolk, in Glandford. I think I've been to Glandford in Norfolk, but I just thought that was really cute. They might like that. We'll see. Cute little Jack in the Box. Let's put him back in. It was two pounds. And then we have, well, I've, I've sold one of these before, but an older one, an older metal mincer is Spong, is the, the name of the, the company that made these. This one, it's got all its bits sellotaped in there. I haven't looked at the value. I don't think it's massive, but as I say, I did, had a really old one before. I remember my mum had it attached to the side of the table and she would, she would do a roast on a Sunday and then mince up the rest of it and make shepherd's pies and things. For the for the week in the seventies, so this is a it's probably one of their later ones, I would imagine. I, as again, I need to look into it. it does say made in England though, so it is vintage. Um, I need to have a little look at the value. Literally, no idea. Like the colour of it. And then my final thing, I said it was a small haul. Are these Hobbs shoes? They're in very good condition, aren't they? Just court shoes, leather, leather bottoms as well had somewhere but you know not masses they're very smart shoes by Hobbs they're not a massive size which is a shame because smaller sizes hang around for longer 37 and a half which is is that four and a half I think that's a four and a half isn't it the Hobbs of London made in Italy so I think they're really nice quality and they're really a pound or two I can't remember exactly what they charge in that charity shop they don't label anything they have everything on lists so I'll sell those I don't know how much I'll sell them for so again I've bought very little I've done no eBay this week at all which is a bad thing because I said I was going to start doing it really regularly but um, time has been kind of just taken up by other things and Hopefully my daughter is now a bit more settled, but I know I'm going to go back and help her with her painting. I've got some more painting I want to do in our house as well. So um, it's, it's going to be a busy DIY month, I think, coming up to Christmas, trying to get it all done. I do need to do a little bit of listing on eBay, though, because it makes a big difference to my sales if I do. Anyway, that is today's waffle. It's not a very long waffle because I am, as I said, I've been super busy helping Becky um, seeing my mum, I had to go and collect my mum's new walker yesterday and take that down to her, so that took another day. So now I need to catch up with myself. So I'm going to go off and do a little bit of catching up. Be really interesting though to hear your comments on whether you buy quality now 
whether you just try not to spend, whether you recognise that sometimes you just have to spend and how you spend your money perhaps is, if you can spend it in a thoughtful and considered way, maybe that's a better way to go. If you enjoyed this video, please do give me the thumbs up and don't forget, forget to subscribe. It really does help my channel if you do that. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.